Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. I want to remind everyone before I bring on our wonderful friend of the ATP family uh, as our special guest today to remind everybody out there in ATP land, if you haven't done it already, please take out your cell phone, text the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H in the message box and send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up in about three or four seconds. You'll get all of our content on the palm of your hand and your cell phone absolutely for free. We never charge for content. So with that out of the way, I want to bring on our wonderful esteemed guest and friend of ATP, Claire Lopez. She's the founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. She was a longtime government expert with, among other places, the CIA in the Middle East. She knows everything about terrorism, Middle East policy, and American foreign policy in relation to the Middle East. Welcome my favorite writer, author, and expert, Claire Lopez. Thank you, Barry, very much. It's, it's really good to be back with you. I am dying to hear your opinion on everything Iranian right now with so much going on in the news. Uh, Iran has a new president. Uh, he was sort of elected, you know, the way they do elections in Iran. The Grand Ayatollah picks the guy that's going to win. Everybody votes for him, and the ones that don't, well, they get a visit from the police or worse. Uh, this new guy, uh, Ibrahim Raisi, is not just a bad guy. He's literally a mass murderer, and he's proud of it. And he was selected probably because of his background, not in spite of it. And now they're talking about him as, well, the potential heir apparent to being the next supreme leader. What are your thoughts about this guy? Well, first of all, of course, uh, as you say, exactly, Barry, uh, Ibrahim Raisi, um, is a longtime insider of the Iranian regime, uh, dating back really to the revolution of 1979. Um, he uh, made his way through the judiciary, though, um, not through the IRGC, and he was not a cleric either, not a Shiite cleric, but through the judiciary. And it's there um, in 1988 in particular, although plenty else, but in 1988, um, as a senior uh, judicial figure in Iran, he was primarily responsible for what's known as the prison slaughter of 1988, with so many opposition members uh, of the Mujahideen Kalk National Council of Resistance of Iran, uh, but others too, in jail for opposing the revolution that had taken place just uh, less than a decade previously. Um, and, and, and opposing um, the theocratic uh, Islamic rule of then, then at that time, the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. And many of these in prison were young people. I mean, really young, teenagers, um, 15, 16 year old kids in jail. And Raisi was responsible um, for a mass slaughter. Now the numbers are, are variable and it's hard to know exactly how many were killed, but the numbers I've heard go um, as high certainly as 30,000 people uh, in the space of just weeks or a few months uh, were, were murdered under Raisi's uh, command. Um, since then, he's been, uh, as I said, an integral member of the regime. Interestingly, this time, and you're right to call it a selection uh, in, in air quotes there, not an election, because that's how things go in Iran. Um, but he, uh, as I said, was not a Shiite cleric. And yet, for this selection to the presidency of Iran, he'll take office next month in August, uh, he was kind of artificially bumped up, if you will, to be an Ayatollah, in a way kind of parallel to what happened with Khomeini, the supreme leader right now, Ali Khomeini, uh, who was a cleric, but not an Ayatollah, Hujat al-Islam, bumped up artificially to become supreme leader when Khomeini died back in 1989. So uh, all of these things uh, play in, but this is, you know, I, I, I hate dividing uh, the, the figures in the regime in Iran into hardliners and moderates. But if you want to do that, this is one of the hardest of the hardliners. Um, you know, nobody is going to uh, get the regime in Iran to moderate or change its policies under Ibrahim Raisi. 
Well, you know, what's curious about that is the same time, and maybe it's not a coincidence at all, Claire, Iran has gone way right, way radical, way not moderate, as you said, by picking about the worst guy they could have. And it parallels the same um, track, I would say, in the United States, where we went from a president who had a very tough stance with Iran, which is stop the terror, stop the bombs, stop the nuclear enhancement, or we're going to strangle you economically. Biden has come into office and has made no secret about the fact that he's Obama part two. He's going into the Iran nuclear deal no matter what Iran does, no matter how belligerent they are. And as a result, Iran has greatly, in the last six months, ramped up their export of terror, their development of long-range missiles, their harassment of shipping. They are hell-bent on getting to a nuclear bomb. They're somewhere in the area of what? 60% enrichment, 25 times what is permitted under the JCPOA. Uh, I guess the question is, if you want a free Middle East and you want peace, you sure miss Trump right now, don't you? Oh, I think many of us do. And not just here in the United States, but over there as well. Um, that litany was absolutely spot on, Barry. Um, this, this Iranian regime senses weakness uh, in the White House right now and is not even concealing uh, the brazenness of its violations, not just, by the way, of the JCPOA, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action from July 2015, the nuclear deal, as it's called, but of the much earlier nuclear non-proliferation treaty to which Iran was then a signatory and remains so to this day. But I'll say what's remarkable to me is to watch that now not just the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, uh, the sort of nuclear watchdog for the UN, but also European partners that were party to the, the, the nuclear deal are all becoming alarmed at just those steps that you're talking about. Uh, with, with the brazenness in particular of, of Iran's nuclear weapons program, uh, the, the amount of nuclear enrichment going on, the percentage, 60%, to which the uranium is being enriched now, um, the beginning of production of enriched uranium metal, which is needed to form uh, a nuclear pit or nuclear bomb, uh, if that's the direction they're going, if there's any doubt left. Um, and not to mention, of course, um, uh, the aggression across the geostrategic aggression across the region, uh, backing for uh, the Islamic Jihadi uh, proxies like Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, and of course now uh, those proxy militias uh, inside of Iraq attacking uh, American personnel and bases where American personnel are based. Claire? Tell our viewers out in ATP land where they can find out about you, would you please? Right, well, certainly here at American Truth Project, uh, but also my interviews and writing posted at Citizens Commission on National Security, uh, The United West. Um, and uh, I also write occasionally, I'm way behind, but for Newsmax, I have a blog at newsmax.com. And then I am on social media uh, Twitter, Facebook, Parlay, and also now Telegram, mm -hmm. Telegram at Liberty Lopez. Ah, uh, sorry, vice versa, Lopez Liberty. The ubiquitous Claire Lopez, she is all-knowing and everywhere, and I urge you to check her out and follow what she says and writes because you'll learn a lot. And for those of you that didn't do it five minutes ago, please text the word TRUTH and send it to 88202. You'll be signed up for all of our content and you can see all of the delightful insight from Claire Lopez on the palm of your hand absolutely for free. For ATP Report, thanks for coming on today. I'm Barry Newsbaum.